Oh, you are you cracking one open yet? Cracking the Terramont open right now. Here we go. Do you just drink it just straight or it rocks? What's your how do you do it? You know what? I always do this one straight because of how we made it. And you know, you remember when you first tried the Terramana, and I appreciate you were one of the first that I sent it to, and you gave me that great phone call saying this oh. and quote you, you were like, This shit is really good. <laughs> That's exactly what I said, really. Yeah. <laughs> You did. I appreciate it. So, um, no, you know, the key with this for me, I just wanted to create a, a, a tequila that was stripped away of the of the flavoring, the, the sugars and a lot of the stuff that the big tequilas are adding these days for the taste of it. And I thought, well, let's go back to fundamentals. Let's uh, only use the highest quality of agave, the most mature agave. And how we make this is with copper pot stills. It is slow cooked, hand roasted. So that's why it tastes so good because it's it's super clean too as well. So with that, brother, cheers. Brother, love you, man. Happy holidays. Mm. Happy holidays. I don't know if you know this, but before we did this, so last year at the Super Bowl, we're doing a little thing here to to help to promote Terramont and Rock. Obviously, you're uh, you're giving the intros to the Chiefs and to the 49ers, but Fox comes to us with me, Jimmy Johnson, and Gronk and you. And they said, listen, you guys can't drink this on the air. <laughs> you remember my reaction? Like, no fucking shot. Absolutely not. And the more we screwed up, I'm like, just keep screwing up your lines. That's fine. Just <laughs> cry it. It was fantastic. And they kept going, you can't drink this on air. I'm like, we're taping. We're good. It was good. It was good. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. I remember that. You know, and you guys, you, Gronk, and Jimmy, uh, you know, I really appreciate that because at that time, if you remember, the brand of Terramana was, we were just releasing it in February. And, you know, of course you run up against the challenges of, oh, another celebrity, another spirit brand. Uh, it's going to be just like the rest. So you guys really took a shot. And I, I really appreciate Fox, too, as well. Um, you know. You know it was really trying. That's what it was. I mean, we saw you as a struggling actor. And I was I like, oh, nothing ever good happens to this guy. Let's. <laughs> I worked with him on the game plan. Let's help him out. That's right, by the way. So you were in the game. I don't think a lot of people know that. You were in the game plan with me. Yeah, were you in that? I was in that. I was an extra oh, okay. in my own movie. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that, man. You were a game you you were in the game plan. I remember we um we had a lot of we had only the top and the best in the world in the world of sports in terms of sports um uh, press and media. And I don't know why the fuck you were there, but it <laughs> <laughs> no doubt about it, no doubt. And that was my first taste of acting. And you know, then I would say I was on Ballers with you. So like you, Andy Garcia, Jay Glazer, Russell Brent, Jay Glazer, Jay Glazer. We had a great time on Ballers, man. I mean, that was that was a fantastic show, and, and you did great. Here's why you did great, and everyone was surprised in a good way. I mean, this respect. We by surprise. Yeah, well, no, no. I mean this respectfully. They were like, and I, I'm talking about the viewers. They were like, damn, Jay's really good. Yeah, he's really good because he's in his element. This is it. It's in the world of football. It's the world he knows, like the back of his hand. He, he knows how to rock and roll. So you were, you were great with that. But, and by the way, but in the world of football is what you know, and certainly, you know, MMA too as well. So, and, so well, well you bought you bought the XFL. As if you don't have enough on your plate, but I know – this is like dear to your heart. Uh, yeah. Tell us what it came about. Well, you know, I was with Vince uh, in the very first iteration of the XFL 20 years ago. And while it was very ambitious at that time, it was fraught with a lot of challenges. And, uh, you know, the opportunity came up uh, at the beginning of the year uh, to acquire the XFL. And, you know, you know my story, Jay, and a lot of people know my story. And for those who don't, I love the game of football. It was my dream to play professional football. And as a matter of fact, and I told him this, and, and we're going to give him shit about this, is the very first time I, I met Michael Strahan, our boy Michael, I said, you live my dream. He goes, what do you mean? I said, this was about 10 years ago. I said, I dreamed of being in the NFL, uh, all pro defensive lineman, winning the Super Bowl, and, and, and playing for the Giants. That was my dream. And he was like, what? I said, you live my dream, man. And so I got a great compliment from him, by the way, because he played with a player who you know, Jesse Armstead, yep. one of the 
one of the great uh, uh, New York Giants, great, who I played with Jesse at the University of Miami. And he go, Michael said to me, he goes, man, I talked to Jesse. And Jesse said, you were good, man. You were yeah. really good. I said I was good until Warren Sapp came along and sat me on the bench. <laughs> but you can't not be good and play at University of Miami. And that's well, that you know, we th that that team was especially, you know, there's a tradition down there at University of Miami, which as you know, we've had a lot of players go to the league. Um, but at that time in the early nineties, not only were we the arguably the greatest team in college football history, now that's arguably. But we also changed the way the game was played in terms of intensity, speed, intention, talking shit. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was University of Miami brand. And so, you know, now you bring up the XFL. That dream never happened for me. I didn't get drafted. Warren Sapp beat me out for my position, clean, sat me on my senior year. And when that didn't happen for me, years later, I had this opportunity, myself and, and my business partner, Danny Garcia, who you know her. Yeah to acquire the XFL and 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 while my dream of playing pro may not have happened now we have an opportunity to create a platform and open up a platform of pro football uh to um give other players opportunities for their dreams to come true man so I can't wait we are super excited about it we're going to launch uh spring of 2022 All right and it's it's going to be great I, I I can't wait so one thing I want you to know about you is you, you play at University of Miami. So that right there already makes you different. I think too many of our, our players and, you know, they, they don't give themselves enough credit, love themselves up from things like that. But playing at the University of Miami, it's not, that's the point oh 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 one percent of the world, and that never leaves you. So I, I want to ask you this. You've done that. You've obviously been a WWE superstar. You've done all sorts of incredible stuff. What's the biggest rush you've ever had? <laughs> uh, the biggest rush I ever had was uh, well there, there's a few that's really hard I've been a lucky son of a bitch to have the career the multiple careers that I've been lucky to have I've been really fortunate brother to have and you bring up football University of Miami and at that time I, I mean when you again you know, we won the national championship, played for it again on two occasions when I was there. In that old Orange Bowl, when you came out of the tunnel and the smoke was going on and we ran through that smoke and we had not been beaten in the Orange Bowl, we had a 10-year run of being undefeated because teams would come in there. They were gassed already at the end of the first quarter because of the heat. And, uh, and also, so we went in there and we intimidated and we talked shit and we played our asses off. That was really special. I think winning the national championship at the University of Miami was, was an incredible rush. Um, and again, you know, at that time, as all these football players, and you know this too, we're all broke. Nobody has any money. You can't do shit. But you, the only thing you do have is this team and this idea of hard work and outworking your competition and being the hardest workers in the room. And that's what we did. The other rush that I, I can tell you I had was the moment – I was able to speak my mind and be authentic in the WWE. So what I mean by that is when I first started uh, in the WWE, I was, I was this good guy, baby face, fresh out of University of Miami. Um, you know, I was told uh, by Vince McMahon, who was, was a very close friend of mine still today, he's a mentor in the world of business. You know, he would tell me, you gotta go out there, you gotta smile. You just gotta keep, you gotta smile. And this is my rookie year, so you can imagine. Right. Smile, you because you're and I said okay I, you know because again you're pissing vinegar and you're ready to get out there and and bang man and 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 he said I want you to be you're grateful that you're here so you got to smile I said okay I'm gonna smile and then I would go out and I would hear these fans they just knew that I wasn't being authentic you know and they would be like you know you fucking suck and I would smile hey thank you man I know I do right I gotta smile <laughs> so finally uh when the decision was uh to uh to, to become a bad guy, to become a heel. I asked Vince, I said, if I can just give me two minutes on the microphone, on live raw, I said, I just want to speak my mind. There was a faction at that time called the Nation of Domination, led by Ron Simmons, who was one of the greatest Florida State football players of all time. Um, and, 
Vince McMahon said, okay, you got two minutes. I said, all right. I wow. grabbed the phone on live TV, which that's a lot, man, because at that time, yeah. there was just two hours of Raw live. That's, that's it. Ballsy to go to your boss when you're a rookie and say, pass me the ball. Pass me the ball. That was it. Just give me one shot. If I suck, and by the way, I had to tell him that. And I said, listen, I understand that this, that we only have two hours of live television and this show is kicking ass. Our ratings were great at that time. And I said, just give me two minutes, one minute. And if I suck, you'll never give me the microphone again. And he said, okay. I grabbed that microphone, Jay. And I said, um, you know, this is the very first night I turned bad. I said, I may be a lot of things, but sucks isn't one of them. And I said, me joining the nation it's not a black thing, it's not a white thing, it's a respect thing. And I'm gonna earn it every night by kicking that at, you know, and I started talking a little shit. But it was in that moment that you could feel the crowd of 15 or 20,000 people go, that's real. What he just said, he wow. just heart. And then that led to, you know, the birth, if you will, of The Rock. So that's a very long answer and I appreciate you asking that. Amazing though, that's when your life changed. So you know, you knew, did you know that night I changed my life. I knew that night that there's no going back from being authentic. Now, I didn't know if I was going to succeed or not, because you don't know. You know, everything is unpredictable, like in life. But I do know that there was power in just me being me and me not. If I, didn't, if I felt like smiling, I smiled. If I didn't want to smile, I didn't smile. If I wanted to raise an eyebrow, I did that. If I wanted to talk shit, I, I talked shit. Um, and... So it was just all about being authentic. And then the authenticity led to just a great connection with the audience, man. You know, it's like, it's like when you, it's like when you, you know when you have an opportunity to reach out and connect with individuals, right? And, and, and this is a segue because I wanna talk about you is the work that I see you do with MVP and, um, merging vets and players and that incredible program you have out of unbreakable i was with you when you started that thing man i remember you said man i got a few guys coming down and what you're able to do there and and you know in a way not only do you captivate that the the, the men and women that you have in unbreakable but everybody captivates each other by being authentic and it's that authenticity that really anchors that thing man so i, I want to take a moment to thank you for asking about me but i do want to take a moment to really recognize you on that, Jay, because it's a big deal. And not only do we feel it because it's the holidays, you know, and, and we're lucky and blessed boys, uh, but there's a lot of them out there who are struggling and you're doing a great job. So congratulations. And when I first started, I would ask you, hey man, I'm starting this program. I'm putting together former NFL players and former combat vets. In, in my mind, like you went to Vince, you knew you were gonna be different. In my mind, I want to do something different, but for me, it was authentic, like you just said. I saw it, and I'm, I know they don't do the same job, but what really sucks, and I know you went through this, when your uniform comes off is you lose that tribe, you lose that team. Like yeah. for me, I started Unbreakable. Um, I started MMA Athletics, my original training program, Unbreakable and MVP, so I could have a team. As much as I started for them, for my own, like I've, I've lived in the grave my whole life. I've suffered from depression, anxiety since I was born. It fucking sucks living in the grave. Yeah. That gets me to slice through the gray and see some blue is having a team and being of service to other people. So I knew that a lot of them were going through the same shit, but just like you were going to be authentic, they needed someone who, like, I'm fucked up. I'm good with my fucked upness. It's okay for me not to be okay. Yeah. But somebody who's, who let them know that's okay. So, you know, when we first started, we, um, myself and Nate Boyer, Green Beret, who I got. Or trained, got signed by the Seahawks as the oldest rookie in NFL history, and Lindsey. And, you know, we, we started with 10 veterans who were homeless at the time and brought them into Unbreakable for free, trained them up, got a couple football players. And what we all try and teach all of them is like you playing, like you playing college football, that's not who you are. Like the fact that you played University of Miami, that's not who you are. What is behind your rib cage that got you? Yeah. Right to beat out millions and millions and millions of people to play in Miami, that's who the fuck you are. Yeah. You use that in that next step of life. But same with our combat vets. Man, these guys do such incredible shit. Think about this. How many have we come across, right? They don't know us, though. Right. And they leave their families, and they go overseas so they can fight for you and your kids, me and my kid, and then they come back over here, and they're like, oh, I'm different. 
And I'm trying to show them, no, you're different. Like different is good. This is what you and I are talking about. Different is what leads to success. But if you're by yourself and you think, oh, I'm different, you're stuck in a hole. If you have a team, a tribe again, a locker room again, they yeah. fill you up, right, and gets you to understand, no, different is good. Different leads to success. That's what can get you through that hole, and that gets you to walk the walk with other people. And here's the coolest thing, bro. Since that first day where we did a feature on Fox, and I asked you to post for and you did, which I love you. Um, again, we started in one location with 10 veterans who were homeless at the time. Two of them now, three of them now work for me. Three now work for me. Great. We were in five locations. We're in uh, New York, Vegas, Atlanta, uh, Chicago, and LA. We're open, open Dallas soon and, and Phoenix and, and, and Seattle. Of our MVPers, more than 50%, so the majority, attempted suicide before meeting us. Right, that man, that's not okay. Right, and I get, man, I get, I get choked up talking about it still. Like, it's that's that 22 number a day of vets who kill themselves. That is not freaking okay. Of our vets and players um, who have joined MVP since, the number is zero. Not fucking one. Fucking right. zero. So, that's it's a movement. It's growing. You know, like I say, I use it a lot for my own depression. Yeah. Um, and it's, I, I'm, man, I'm just so proud of these guys. You, you are too, and I, I love you for it. I'm so proud. I am so proud of those boys. And, and I'm so proud of you too as well. You know, and, and we've all gone through this. this. You know, mental health, we've all gone through our versions of mental health and, and moments of depression, uh, episodes and bouts of depression. You and I have talked about this personally. Yeah. Um, and... You know, the, the thing that I really appreciate about the stuff that you're doing with these guys, because they're walking living examples. When you get guys now and the percentage is zero that they're trying to check out, zero. zero. It's so powerful because it illuminates the power and the importance of it being okay to ask for help. Yeah. Ask for help because, you know, as you know, just, it just as dudes, right? As dudes. Right. You know, we have, there's an ego, there's a strength to us that we want to maintain and hold on to, and we bottle our shit up inside, and this is how we deal with our emotions. You know, maybe we don't have the tool set emotionally to deal with them, uh, so we keep it all inside and we don't ask for help. But, you know, because in a lot of ways, it's this idea that's actually so flawed that asking for help is a weakness, when in reality, as you know, and as I know, and as the MVP uh, boys know, and, and people around the world know this, uh, asking for help is actually the superpower that we have. Okay. It's actually the superpower, brother. So cheers to that, man, and the great work that you guys Vulnerability, like, hey, this right here is one thing, but vulnerability is real strength. And for people like you and I to come out, who has the do the quotient, if you will, and to show people, man, it's okay to be vulnerable. That's how we're going to make it in this world. And I do think, I truly believe that our, our combat vets could be the ones that could change the view of mental health in this country because they they are willing to go through it. And I have a, a big voice, you have a big voice, we have this platform that we can give them. We have one of our combat vets, Kirstie Ennis. Um, she's one of our uh, our, our unbreakable uh, spokespeople. She, uh, Marine door gunner, her helicopter went down. She's had 46 surgeries, um, lost her left leg, and man, she's on her third master. She's the fifth ranked snowboarder in the world after this shit went down. One day we're doing an MVP in New York and Roger Goodell was there. Roger's crying, listening to our guys talk. And he turns to her and he says, hey, you're going to save the world. And she says, no, nope, we're going to prove it. I mean, it was like out of a, it was like out of a movie. But I do think that this group is the one that can improve the world. I'm just their vehicle to get their message out. Yeah, man. Abs absolutely. Mm -hmm. I love that you brought up vulnerability too, man, because there's you know, for your audience right now. Who's Misty there? What's Am I getting you a little Misty there? Huh? Am I getting you a little Misty there? Am I getting you a little Misty? No, man. I just, I got a lot of pollen in this room. In, <laughs> in my office, there's just. It's That's what I'm talking about. Fucking pollen around here. I got, somebody's <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh But, you know, I'm glad you brought up that about, about vulnerability, too, because it's so important. You know, there's a, 
there's a there's a, a woman by the name she, her name is Dr. Brene Brown, and I would highly recommend her to your audience to watch because she talks about the power of vulnerability and how it is so critical uh, for us to uh, progress in life when we really embrace uh, that vulnerability, man. And I love that you always talk about what's between uh, what's behind your rib cage and between your ears, right? Because that's where our anchor is, man. So you know, again, congratulations on that and. Also, too, you mentioned the gray, and I love that yeah. because there's a uh, there's one of my favorite country singers. His name is uh, Cody Jenks. He has a song. It's called uh, one of the lines in it is called "There's There's a lot of color in the gray." Oh, wow! When you, yeah, when you think about that, right? Because oh. gray sometimes looks a certain way and neutral, oh. and maybe it doesn't have the zest that one would think. But in actuality, man, there's so much you know color in that gray, man. It, it's I man living in the gray. It, it sucks. Uh, yeah. But the more you talk about it, I guess the less sucky it gets. The more you can embrace the suck. But there's there there's life in the gray. Yeah, that's great. There's life and power in the gray, you know, and that's uh and we got to remember that. And and so congrats on that, man. I'm very proud of you. And also, tell me a little bit about your uh, yeah, which I'm really excited about, man, about your supplement line. How about that, right? So we have oh. This just happened to have been placed up there when you were coming on, who has more followers than anybody in the history of life. I don't know how that happened. Uh, but yeah, we come out December 1. Um, so from today. Yeah, right, next Tuesday. And then, look, it's, it's for everybody. So it's for shiny people like you, you know, the good-looking people, then the great-looking people like me. But it's for everybody. We didn't want to exclude everybody. So even, like I said, I want to be different. But everything I try and do is different, right? And for this line right here, first of all, it's 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 banned substance free, which we have to do because we've trained, you know, I've trained over a thousand football players and, and people kind of look at it, but why has this reporter trained players? I got into mixed martial arts early. Again, same thing. I felt like I belonged in a cage. That's why I felt like, and not even a win. I started going to the cage fighting people because I felt I needed to take beatings. That's where I felt like I belonged. And then after we would kick each other's asses, the greatest conversations ever would happen with me and Chuck Liddell and Randy Couture. And all that's, that's the magic of this locker room we talk about. So we're trying to open up our locker room for everybody out there. And the first four influencers, at least we got, um, are Kirstie Ennis, who I just talked about. Nate yeah. Morgan, who I talked about. A guy named yeah. Jay Lick, who's a, he led the Rangers for 20 years. A woman named Tanya Oxidize, the first, she's an African-American uh, woman who was in the 82nd Airborne Special Operations. But, we're trying to get everybody else out there. Like we're talking about vulnerability and we have a whole thing out there. I am unbreakable. Hashtag I am unbreakable. Right. What makes you unbreakable? And it's our scars and it's our flaws. Yes. And it's the vulnerability that makes us unbreakable. So we're trying to open this to the masses to get people. So this is, so this is, this is for, this is for everybody. This is for, now look, obviously we want to build up on the outside for me. Again, I train all these football. We've trained over a thousand football players. In MMA, this past off season, when we trained Alden Smith, who's been out of the league for five years, and our MVP crew built him up here, and then Unbreakable built him up here, and we got him signed by the Dallas Cowboys. Been out of the league for five years, right? Never happened before, and you know, so we got to make sure that we build you up physically, but we also want people. We want to build up like I'm talking about. One of our hashtags that we build you up from the inside out. Yeah. And that's we're going to drink our aminos and our pre-workout drink and our proteins. We also build you up from the inside out. Great. So, That's I, I'm gonna do. Well, so wait a second. So, so you you have an exclusive partnership with uh, with GNC. So, I do. Fantastic. So you guys are you guys are already obviously uh, the supply is already uh, coming down the pike and it's all ready to go and shipped. I'm assuming already one week from today. So. Yeah. What, oh, so what, what I was, oh, oh, what I had meant to say earlier was I need your address. If you wouldn't mind typing it into the comment section, so I could have my assistant send you uh, your VIP. Box. Well, watch this. So check this out. We got, you got. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. You got a whole box that'll come to your house over here. Okay. Look at that. We've got your back. So all I need you to do is just type your address in the comment section. You cool with that? Yeah, well, listen, before I type my address in the comment section, you're a week out from launching. Two months out from launching Terramana, you had a bottle of Terramana sitting on the doorstep. You're a week out from launching, and now you're asking me for my address 
when we're on IGTV Live. Are you um, off? Are you it's, questioning my friendship? Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Off. Is I'm a little hurt. Somehow this is your fault. I don't know how yet, but this is your fault. I'm just telling you, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, send me this up, man. I can't wait to try it. Oh, dude, I can't wait. I appreciate you, man. Hey, real quick. You just got done working on what? You throw movie after movie after movie. What do you, what do you finish up on? We just wrapped a movie called Red Notice. And Red Notice was a big one for Netflix. It was, uh, uh, it was a big partnership for us and Seven Bucks Productions and a big investment. And we started that at the, at the beginning of the year in 2020. And we shot for eight weeks. And we, like the rest of the world, we were shut down, as a matter of fact. So it's, it's a global heist movie with myself, Ryan Reynolds, and Gal Gadot. And we were on our way to Italy when Italy started to really um, feel the effects of COVID. It shut down and then all of a sudden it reached our shores. So we got shut down. So we sh started shooting that eight weeks at the beginning of the year, shut down. And then it took us months to come back and really put in health and safety protocol and measures that were really aggressive and strict. And we finally got back up and running about three months ago and we just wrapped red notice so i'm happy to tell you we are officially wrapped uh I'm very proud of the crew we had over 800 crew members so you'll appreciate this brother in your audiences we had over 800 crew members who had to sequester had to uh, commit to our program which again we were the most aggressive health and safety practices and measures for COVID in the industry of hollywood uh and we raised the bar and set a new paradigm but it required a team as you know team yep. to to this so we had over 800 crew members who committed man and we crushed it and we are rap now red notice hey do you go back to back to back movies um because you enjoy it or because you're so afraid to have seven bucks in your pocket you know me well <laughs> uh you know both. That's a great question. And, and I have, um, you know, I've always been open about this. It's just, you know, when I, I had seven bucks in my pocket and I, I got, mm -hmm. that when I was 23 years old, I got cut from the CFL, the Canadian Football League. And, um, Bastards. And that was, well, you know what? I got to tell you, I went up there with like so many players, right? You know, a lot of guys in CFL and who played in the CFL and then who went on to have, you know, great pro leagues, or, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, great NFL uh, careers. I went up there with all the passion that I was going to kick ass in the CFL, use my opportunity in the CFL to parlay that into the league, into the NFL. And it didn't happen for me, man. And that was a really sobering thing when I realized I had to close that chapter in my life in the CFL. And I had to realize that I was good, but I wasn't good enough. And that's one of those tricky things, as you know, as, a, as an athlete, when you, you have to come to grips and have that come to Jesus moment with yourself that you're good, but this is where the road ends for you right now. So, uh, and by the way, I mean, that led me into a nice, uh, real fun bout of depression back then <laughs> I had to get through, but no. And so everything I do, uh, whether it's film or, um, you know, and, and whether it's Termana or XFL or anything like that, it is all driven with a passion because I'm very passionate about what I do. And, uh, but also to me, I'm, I'm, you know, uh, right around the corner, I, I, I got seven bucks. Right around the corner, I got that eviction. I'm horrified to go back to that. There, you know that. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, it's just people, I think, look at you or Strahan or Wahlberg or something like that and go, oh man, these guys haven't made, no, that fear never, ever leaves you. Just yeah. doesn't go away. It, it never goes away. It's just like you when you signed your first contract, I think, for 50 grand or whatever it was. Right? You know, you've come a long way since then. But also, so before you sign that 50 grand contract, that mindset, that doesn't go away. That so, still drives you and pushes you. That 10 years before, the most I met, I was me covering the Giants. And that's how I met my little sister, Strand. And, <laughs> um, man, I made 9,450 bucks a year. And I was so broke that Michael and he and I just looked on each other. He drove me back in the city every single day. I couldn't afford bus fare oh. from New York to Giant Stadium back. So he drove me back in every single day. And I just, I walked in the Giant locker room and I said that first day, okay, I can't beat these guys at their job. How am I going to be different? Right? Yeah. Hey, I'll be the last motherfucker standing here. 
Right, whoever said quitting is not an option. There you go. And whoever, whoever, you know, it's the easiest option in the world. But I said, man, I'm going to outwork everybody here, not by a little, but if these other reporters are here from 9 to 5, I'll be here from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Yeah. I'll be here from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. I will outwork them, outwork them. And it took 10 years of being rejected over and over and over. And I finally got that call from my agent, Maury, who said, hey, we finally got the full-time job. I said, where? He said, CBS. I said, I'll take it. He said, don't you wonder how much? I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I will <laughs> take it. <laughs> and he said, 50 grand. I said, I'll take it. But that's the day for me. I found out who the fuck I was because I said that a long time ago. I would not stop. If it took me another 10 years, I'd still do it. But the um, the effects, they don't leave us, right? The, the uh -oh. being rejected, you cry and you cry and cry. Man, it doesn't ever leave your soul. I just want people to know that. Man, you know, it, it no, it, it never leaves. And it's the thing that sometimes people can forget because they – can see and I understand they get enamored sometimes by the bright lights and you know the you know the success and, and things like that but uh, you know the real anchoring stuff is the stuff where you where you struggled and you brought up about the CFL and you you were making nine grand a year uh, when I was offered the practice squad at the CFL wow. for the Calgary Stampeders the head coach at that time was Wally Buono and, and now he is a CFL legend. He's a very good friend of mine. He was a mentor, too, as well, when I really needed one. Practice squad of the CFL, roughly making three to $400 a week Canadian. Wow. I had to convert that and send it home. Wow. And uh, I, I didn't even, it didn't even matter. So same thing. I was like, I don't care. I'm going to take it because it's an opportunity. And I'm going to do my best to outwork everyone and be the hardest worker in the room. And, they, and again, same thing. Well, let me tell you how much it is. My agent was tell, trying to tell me, listen, it's going to, I said, I don't give a fuck how much it is. It's just an opportunity that you got to grab it by the horns and that's it, man. So no, those, those times never, uh, they never go away. Uh, well, brother, I appreciate you joining me here, man. Thank you so much. I promise you, I will be sending you my GNC line by next week. I promise you. Yeah. By next week, yeah. You, yeah, a week from today when you have a lot <laughs> Well, look, as always, brother, I got to do a Terramana toast to you. It's Terramana Tuesday on my end. Uh, so cheers, brother, and uh, thank you for your time. Always appreciate your brotherhood. And, um, and, and most of all, stay healthy and have a happy Thanksgiving to you and, and uh, Love audience. Dude, and again, thank you for spending pre-Thanksgiving with me, man, and, and for everybody else out there. No, you're not alone on Thanksgiving, man. Love yourself up. Dwayne, I love you, brother. Cheers. Thank you, my friend. All right. Yeah. And as always, go fuck yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My friends are real assholes. <laughs> Brother, appreciate it. All right. How great was that, gang? Uh, and hey, our guy right here will get our, when he sends me his address, we'll get our champions and legends, CBD as well. We'll send that to him. But again, folks, this line right here, a portion of all of it goes to our charity, MVP, Merging Vets and Players, up in our combat vets. It's on sale Tuesdays at uh, GNC stores everywhere, gnc.com. It is, we've been working on it for so long before this pandemic. I'm so proud of it. So, hey, uh, Dwayne, I appreciate that you joined me, brother. Thank you for all those followers that joined me today. I hope we showed you a different side of him than you normally see. He's different. I'm different. Be proud that you're different. Love you all.